Today is Tuesday, October the 29th, 2013, and I'm going to uh, show you right now an old Collins 30K1 cabinet. I have converted it to a 4CX1000 back in 1983. I have it all really well documented in these books here, schematics and what have you. Uh, but before the um, Collins lovers come and tar and feather me, I bought this in 1975 for $75 uh, from a town pretty close to Atlanta, Georgia. It had a pencil sharpener mounted right here. You can see the little triangular holes. They had been a lot of parts robbed out of it. Down here where I added a uh, FOMA voltage meter, these four holes right here, is where the guy drilled a hole in and mounted a sign that says something like, if you're not a licensed operator, keep your cotton picking hand off the goodies. Actually, I think he was a CB or FOMA voltage adjustment. I've added a lot of this. I put this meter in here. This is the play voltage. This is not original. It had a great big chrome one there that somebody stole, and I guess they have it hanging up or in a drawer or whatever. I put these uh, square standby switches in there. You'll like this. You'll, and I'll show you how this thing works. Let's fire it up. So this thing won't last too long. Okay. Then I run up the filament voltage. Unlock this. Run this up to 6 volts. Go let it run, uh, warm up for quite a while. And I'll show you why in particular. Um, I'll be driving it with this little uh, ICOM IC736. We'll be watching it here with this little digital readout. It's a bird line section with a coaxial dynamics 2500 watt element and I'll have to pump it into this 600 uh, watt dummy load that's the biggest one I have. Uh, I use a big roller coil here, vacuum capacitors on both sides, monitor the screen grid and plate current. Let me show you behind it now. Okay, this is inside the cabinet. This is the old um, R175A RF choke. There's the tube with a little bit of a parasitic choke on it. It's a gigantic roller inductor. I can put my hand in it now because it's, it's not on. You see how big and nice that thing is. Vacuum capacitor tuning and loading. The loading capacitor I think is only uh, 1,000 picofarad, so it's not quite big enough for uh, 80 meters, but I always just use it on 20. Got the old Collins filter in it. So I added this chassis, lower air vane switch, the whole nine yards. I just went nuts on it. This is a little control panel. This is a 6AL5, and it does have an ALC output. I'm not going to plug it in for this because it's not necessary. But this is the exact ALC circuit for a um, Collins 30S1. The low voltage power supply, which I've had to modify, of course. The high voltage power supply. The original one used two 866s. I've used three B28s, and I normally use these guys right here. But for this video, I'm hoping that these 866s will work. Here's the power transformer for it. It's an RCA. If you look back there, you see that big old capacitor made by Maxwell. I think it's like a 40 microfarad, 6,000 volt. It has signs on it that it's lethal. And this is an odd part that you might find interesting. It's kind of dark in there, I know. Let me see if I can get this darn thing off my hand and get a flashlight and I'll show you what's in there. Here's what's in there that you couldn't see. That's a uh, 5 kilowatt 2 to 1 transformer. Uh, this, this whole cabinet is built, even this transformer right here, you can see it has primary taps of uh, 100, 110, 120. This is a 120 volt cabinet, but it draws so much current that I needed to run 240 volts from here to it because the voltage drop was too big. So anyway, I bought and installed this 2 to 1 transformer. So I run 240 volts to it and step it down to 110. Crazy, huh? Yeah, there's that Maxwell capacitor in there. That, that's not original. This looks like something right out of uh, uh, Back to the Future. I'm sure it would take you back to the future if you got across it. 
But anyway, there it is in the back. I'm going to let it warm up for quite a while. I'll uh, hook it. I'll uh, we'll go ahead and connect it up. Got to connect the antenna output right there. I guess that used to be the antenna output. This thing was built in 1947. Let me show you here. But there it is. Radio transmitting equipment serial number 16, model 30K, type 30K model 1. Really nice old uh, device. Let's let this guy warm up and hopefully those 866s won't blow up. I was just looking at the boxes here that they came in and for some reason looks like the last time I checked it was 10778. Uh, a couple of days back, huh? Well, we'll see in just a minute. One thing I forgot to mention, very important, this is the uh, 3000 volt output when it's turned on and I built a shorting switch right here. You can see that? When you close the door, the door pushes this in and away from this high voltage terminal. I run it through a, uh, that's a 0.47, a uh, half ohm resistor before it goes to the output. In case something shorts, that resistor explodes and indeed it does. So when I shut the door, this thing opens up. You want to put something like that on there when you work with this kind of voltage because it's easy to get excited and forget and you only get one chance. This thing will kill you. I'm probably going to have to t tape it and then be very careful if we want to see these uh, rectifiers uh, with their beautiful purple glow. I'm going to make, a, make it with it open while it's powered up. We'll see. Okay, we're back, but unfortunately the 866s I plugged in there did not heat up as I obviously disconnected the uh, filament supply from them. They were cold, so those will we will not be able to see them. I just simply put the uh, solid state rectifiers back in. Oh well, that'll uh, make it unnecessary to have the back of it open for, for any reason. I planned on uh, cheating the, that grounding switch. But anyway, let's see if we can uh, turn this thing on and, and quickly look at its power output. If I key the microphone, it brings it up. There's our plate voltage. Dead on three kilovolts. Uh, screen voltage, or current rather, excuse me. Grid. There should never be any grid current. And there's a static plate current. It's running about 260 mils or so. Actually, this 20 milliamps is not actually, that is actually zero. Because there has to be a uh, resistor to ground. It's 15K, I believe because uh, the 4CX1000 can exhibit negative screen current. Uh, the uh, Collins 30 S1 actually has this screen meter on theirs uh, uh, preset off of zero so that you can read the negative screen current. Well, actually, I can modulate it right now and see it, but I'll have to load it up with, uh, run it into a dummy load. Right over there, and here's our output. Of course, we're not going to see very much. I'll have to put the little transceiver here in the CW mode. We'll we'll see what its static power is. You can see the uh, plate voltage ever so slightly modulate, and uh, plate current. That, that's about the way to drive it, right there. You don't want to see any peaks, any jumping of the uh, grid current. It's output is several hundred watts, like this. Yeah, PEP. It's WA4QGA testing. Let's see what it does in the CW mode. Okay, I hope that glare's not too bad. I'm low, when I uh, key it here, so I get uh, about 840 milliamps of plate current. The grid is just a tiny bit, so I'm driving at maximum. That's actually about 40 milliamps, and the output is uh, 1.41 kilowatts. So it does pretty good. Doesn't do much in there. Plate voltage, kind of interesting. Drops to about 2700 under full load. 2000 key off, 2700 key down. That's pretty good for a homemade 30 year old transmitter. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this. There it is in there, the Jan 8168. 
see it from the front. That's a little uh, pressure gauge over there. Just a whole bunch of, you know how we just can't quit playing with our toys. You have vacuum capacitor, big roller. This does nothing. This does nothing. This does nothing. And there it is. So that's the old Collins 30K1 brought back to life. Made 1947. Uh, I think this thing weighs like 600 pounds. It is enormous. Good quality steel. I'll tell you something else that's neat about it. Let me unkey it here. It rolls around like it's on glass. It's got four wheels on it, I guess. Now, they must be made of some darn hard stuff to be 66 years old and not have any flat spots. This is the uh, exciter that, that goes with it. It's called a uh, 310B1, I believe. You might be slightly interested in this. I'm not prepared too well for this. It uses these little plug-in coils. This thing still works. Works quite nice. It never was really, really stable. Um, but uh, you open it up, and there it is in there. You use those little plug-in coils. Of course, when you open it, uh, it turns itself off right there. Those are really good ideas. Really good ideas. But anyway, there it is. A modern day college 30k1 hope you enjoy